Off the top at noon, the penalty phase of the Parkland shooters trial heading into its third week today, and it's been an emotional day in court. We're now hearing from the 54th witness to take the stand, a forensic pathologist with the Palm Beach Medical Examiner's Office. He took the stand to talk more about the autopsy of one of the victims who died after Nicholas Cruz opened fire, killing 17 people and injuring 17 others at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School four years ago. And let's get right over now to Christina Vasquez. She's joining us live. She's outside the courtroom in Fort Lauderdale with what happened this morning in court. Christina. Monday certainly beginning with some very heavy, very difficult testimony. It's quite significant to who the jurors just heard from. So his name is Dr. Terrell Topps. And the reason why uh, his testimony is extra significant in terms of where we are in the process, as he discussed in detail, and we're going to get to that in a second, about the autopsies he performed on two of the students. This is Luke Hoyer and Joaquin Oliver, and on one of the staff members, Aaron Feist. But with those three, now, as of this morning, these jurors have heard just chilling details, really, um, in terms of testimony and these horrendous crime scene photos on all 17 of the staff and students that this Parkland shooter has confessed and pled guilty to murdering on Valentine's Day 2018. Remember, it is him pleading guilty to those 17 murders that set up the penalty phase we are now in, where these jurors have to consider whether or not they think life or death is the appropriate sentence. So in this testimony we heard this morning, um, especially when we start with first, let's talk a little bit about Luke Hoyer. He was 15 at the time, and some things he noted were not just in terms of where the entry is. We've heard this before, right, where they go into it's it's clinical detail, but the um, the way in which these high velocity bullets, according to so many medical uh, examiners, have just impacted bones and tissue and just complete devastation. It sounds clinical and sometimes it's even dry, but the language being used as they walked folks through exactly which organs failed or in, in, in their words, obliterated. It's really difficult to hear. So now imagine being Luke Hoyer's parents in the courtroom as they are hearing this medical examiner go through this detail about a, a bullet that pierces the neck and then leaves and then reenters and the damage that does. But one detail here that was flushed out uh, with the lead prosecutor, Michael Satz, was uh, something that was called top down. So the direction of one of these bullets in that direction, according to this medical examiner, then says that the muzzle would have been on top of um, this bullet, right? So you get an image of Luke Hoyer either kneeling or on the ground with the shooter and his muzzle above him. So that alone is, is harrowing. Um, then we get into teacher Aaron Feiss. Um, and we learn about the bullets there actually being so intense. There's so much kinetic energy in these high velocity bullets coming from an AR-15 like bullet that it just fractures uh, two of the ribs. And then it ends with Joaquin Oliver and my goodness, a uh, very chilling testimony, especially about a bullet that um, apparently goes through his hand and then through his hand, through his temple. And uh, it's a tough language used. I'm going to tell you right now, it's graphic. If you have children at home, I want to warn you before I say what I'm about to say. But um, again, kinetic energy, a lot of energy in this bullet, goes through his skull and obliterates within his skull. Actually, he says the only thing keeping his head together at that point was his scalp um, and his forehead skin. So we're going to stop for a second so you can listen in to a little bit of what that doctor had to say on the stand. Dr. Topps, what was the cause of death of Luke Hoyer? The cause of death is gunshot wounds of neck and torso. Under the jawline of Mr. Hoyer's um, neck, inner side of the skull and the brain. So the cause of death of Aaron Feist was, so the cause of death of Aaron Feist was what? Gunshot wounds of torso. Internal bleeding resulted in the compression of the left lung, making it very difficult for him to breathe. Internal bleeding resulted in the compression of the left lung, making it very difficult for him to breathe. Internal bleeding resulted in the compression of the left lung, making it very difficult for him to breathe. Okay. 
And when we get into, again, let's go now to Lou Coyer, that testimony they just heard. I mean, some of the language that this medical examiner used, again, to just walk them through the science is just, when you put the image to it, is so painful, right? This idea of Lou Coyer having so much internal bleeding, more than a liter, that he is literally, his, he's literally drowning in his own blood internally. So you can imagine what it was like to be in that courtroom. Um, just imagine being the families for a heartbeat and this is your child and you're hearing this testimony play out and then to be with them in that space. Um, you mean, you could hear uh, folks more than just the Horace family, other folks like we have um, uh, Chris Hickson's wife in there, she, you know, she's crying. It was just, it was a lot, you know, and the jurors, remember, they're watching all of this. I will tell you that today's testimony, and this is it, they've seen all 17, but there was today's testimony was the first time I had seen so many of the jurors pausing and looking over at the family members and taking it in themselves. So right now, the um, there's another witness uh, on the stand to, right now, a state witness. It's a detective going a little bit into his cell phone record. So we'll have more on what he has to say coming up at Local 10 News at 3. But for now, reporting live for you, I'm Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. Very tough day in court indeed. All right, Christina, and of course you can watch some of this live if you care to. Gavel to Gavel coverage is on Local10.com, across our social media pages, and the Local10 Plus app, which is on your smart TV. We also have that in-depth section online as well for you. Scan this QR code and you'll find the timeline of what has happened, learn about each of the victims, hear testimony from those who survived, plus what we now know about each of the jurors who has the daunting task of determining the shooter's fate.